Hey guys, it's Ray. Welcome back to another Spectator gameplay. Today we are seeing what happens when Faker plays the new rework Aatrox. He's playing him in the mid lane, as you would do if you were Faker playing anything, because Faker is a mid lane player. Funny how that works out. So first things first, boys and girls. Let's take a look at your runes, or Faker's runes, on Aatrox. Bam! There they are. He goes for the Conqueror. With the Resolve secondary, Resolve second to help you in that mid lane against the Zoe and any kind of Pope champion, really. And then Curus is Q E W. That'll set you up if you want to play Aatrox. And to be honest, this page will work if you want to play him top lane as well. So, or bot lane as, yeah, anything works now. Also, we have Shad with us today. So, you are joined by not only myself, but the lovely Shad well down here as well, taking. One of his much needed old grandpa naps. So, what happens when Faker plays Aatrox, boys? Let's find out. Like I mentioned, he is playing versus a Zoe in the mid lane. And here we go. Now, we're not going to be watching this all in like slow speed. We'll be speeding this up uh, as, as we go on, guys, just to get the basics down of how he does his uh, how he does his lane phase. We'll watch it a bit slow to start with. So Aatrox as a melee champion does sort of struggle in the early lane phase versus, oh boy, versus ranged champions. So he's playing a little bit far back and is going to focus mostly on that farm in the early game until he has the tools to be able to engage onto Zoe and fight her. Because you don't want to get hard poked out a lane when you're melee into a range. That's very easy for that to happen. And Aatrox's combo if you do want to engage, quite simply, you want to walk up to them a little bit. Ideally, you want to be able to hit them with a QE so you can knock them up. And then throw out your W. Ooh, you got it. Throw out your W, the old mini baby cage. And then you can hunt someone down and F them up. Talia is a little bit out of position here, though, boys. I think she's going to have to go for that cheeky execute. Meanwhile, Faker's just merrily farming in that mid lane. Starting first item is a Dawn Shield, by the way, guys. Dawn Shield in this matchup where you are getting harassed and poked down. See how he uses his Q to push out the minion wave a little bit as well because he's getting shoved under tower. This is mostly for minion wave control where he doesn't want uh, to just get fully under tower and have to, to farm under tower or <coughs> under tower. Because uh, when that happens, exactly as you're seeing here, you then get harassed under the tower. And it's a lot harder for you to get the CS2 because you are fighting the tower for those last hits, which isn't really a recipe for success. Let's speed this up a little bit here, guys, because this is where the boring stuff happens. Faker has cleanse, by the way, just so that he can't get one comboed by the uh, Zoe. Bit surprising. Well, it's not fully surprising, honestly. But it's good into Zoe specifically, at least we'll put it that way. All right. Really interesting lane mechanics, guys, as you would imagine. Puts a cheeky ward down, good old Faker. So, you guys, if Faker wards, then you must too. Must be a good thing. Just playing chill here, boys. Just playing chill. Knows that this lane phase will be quite difficult for him. See, goes for that cheeky little engage there. Oh, wow, that's cool. <laughs> Gets slept in the uh, mid queue, but still, that's what he wanted to do. Catches the Zoe on the edge of her of Aatrox's queue, uh, and then throws out that cage. Goes to that little engage, but the disengage from the sleepy bubble trouble means that he's not going to be able to do anything more. But if he had his cleanse up, maybe he could. Wait, he does have his cleanse up. Hmm, I don't know why he didn't go for that. So she, did she pick up? Did she pick up a cleanse there just out out of the random minion? It must be. Must be one of those balloons. Anyway, he's always recalled here, so Faker's going to shove this one in and probably do a recall of, him, of his own. If you see your enemy lane a recall, generally speaking, what you want to do, if you push waves down fast enough, that is, is to go for a recall of your own. Because imagine if he'd stayed in lane here, he would then be having to lane versus a Zoe, who's bought her first items uh, when he's basically naked because he hasn't bought anything. But he goes for his tier 2 boots. An interesting choice to rush the Ninja Tabby. It's mostly for the rest of his team. Obviously not just for that Zoe matchup. Because Zoe and Ninja Tabby, like, eh, not, really that, not really that useful. But very good versus Darius. Very good versus Jarvan and versus Lucian as well. 
Let's keep the sped up here. So now he's level 6, by the way. He has his uh, ulti, which makes it easier for him to fight and also gives him uh, that revive. So really useful having this ultimate. But to be honest, he's still gonna, just going to be happy farming. Ouch. Just going to be happy farming and waiting for his Talia to come in and help him if she decides to do so. But at the same time, from Talia's perspective, it's not a bad idea for her to be uh, just looking at other lanes as well. Alright, we're just going to speed through this stuff, guys, because this is the boring part of the lane phase that you guys don't really care about watching, is it? Alright, so here we go. Could be a bit of a fight here. Zori walks up. Now, that is a, that's the mistake, the first mistake of this fight. The big mistake of this fight. Jace is coming in here. Might be able to still do this. But we'll, we'll rewind in a second so we can see that mistake. Dodges out the sleepy bubble trouble. Oh my goodness. Unlucky. His ultimate times out. It times out right as he's going for the play. So he dies. That is unfortunate. But they might still be able to pick up the Jarvan here. Let's assume they get that Jarvan. Nice. And I'll quickly show you what happens here. The mistake of this play. So the big mistake here is... Aatrox relies on his baby cage a lot for his fights, right? In order to be able to chase someone down, he wants to stick that W, that cage, on his opponent. And so this is what happens right here, guys. Right, bam! That is the mistake. Now, even though he hits the cage, the thing is that this cage, the cage is, is shaped in such a way that it's way, like, longer than it is wide, okay? Opposite, this is, this is the anti-chode cage, okay? The problem is that he's fired his W out in such a way that unless Zori runs up, she's going to easily walk out of this, which is exactly what happens. Zori walks down, which is probably the smarter way for her to run, and it means that she literally just walks out of the cage. So now he's popping his, his combo, he wants to go aggro and stuff, and he's just failing miserably because he's already missed his W, and now he's just really lacking any kind of resources to go for the play. So that's the big mistake there. You, you've got to kind of aim. It's like if he were an Olaf and he threw his axe like that. His whole kind of combo, like if you were an Olaf there, if you couldn't then pick up the rest of your axes, you'd be totally screwed as well. And it's basically what we saw there too. So that was a mistake there when you're playing Aatrox. Don't forget to use your, uh, or be care, be cautious and be thoughtful of the way you are using your cage because you really want to put it in the, in the path of the enemy's escape. That's one. Double red buff here. That's two. Excelente. Alright, back to lane phase. What else has he bought here? A ruby crystal. I wonder what he's going for here. Either way. What the heck was that? Farm, farm, farm. Exciting stuff. Dodge the cage, Faker. He did it. Dodge the cage. Who would have thought? Whoops, Daisy, the best, woo, the best player in the world, known for his movement. People have described playing versus Faker as like playing versus someone with scripts. Anyway, four man gank in this mid lane. A black shield to help out the Zoe, but I don't think it's going to be enough. She falls down, and Faker gets himself another assist. In fact, he didn't even get an assist on Zoe the first time. That is his first assist. Feels bad, man. Feels bad for Zoe though, honestly, in that situation. Talia ulti, the roam from Jace, and the Rakan coming through here. What'd you do against that? Alright, what are you gonna buy, Faker buddy? Phage! Alright, so he's either rushing the Cleaver or the Triforce. It would make more sense, honestly, if Oh, okay, for him to go Cleaver, but still. Bit of a cheeky engage there, but this is a really tough matchup for him because he does just get slept. Oh god, he could be dead here. Ah, he's going for the cleanse. He, he, he knew he could be dead there. He knew he could be dead. Anytime he goes in, he just gets... I, see, I don't understand why he uses his cleanse defensively there, but doesn't use his cleanse to, like, more aggressively. I feel like that would have been a better option there, honestly. Like, when he's engaging, just use the cleanse. Baker's playing with fire here, though, boys. No, he's out. He's gone for a control ward, and he, he generally just recalled for health. He generally just recalled for health. Some, con some consumables. Zoe, bam, you're dead. The 1v1 from the eight, from the from the jungler. Nicely done, that Frida Carlo, whoever the hell you are. Reminding us all why Talia Jungle is the strongest jungler right now in League of Legends. 
which it actually is. Weird as that sounds. Alright, Faker, mate. What have you got planned here, buddy? What have you got in mind? Oh, yeah, I was going to say it's a risky dive when you knew when you know Jarvan's around. Very close with the wall. Somehow picks up my gun on the side anyway. Let's just skip through this. Oh, here comes the dive, though. Nice snipe. Pops the ulti. This is the, this is beautiful here from Blake. Absolutely beautiful. And this is the thing with the new Aatrox, or any, any iteration of Aatrox, really, but especially the new Aatrox. In your ultimate, you revive. So he tanks tower aggro with his ulti because he knows, yo, he can't die. He'll just drop tower aggro, he'll be absolutely fine, and then his team can walk out of that scot-free. Beautiful stuff. Doing some cheeky split pushing here. Get that farm, go into that bot tower as well. He might come up against the Darius here, or well, the Darius has killed uh, Rakan. But in generally speaking, in that split push matchup, it's going to be Faker versus or Aatrox versus Darius. I think he's okay with that. He's got the Ninja Tabby. He's going into the Cleaver as well. Pretty much should be fine in that one v one, honestly. So knows he can win the matchup, or at least knows he's not. It's not too bad for him. So is perfectly fine with going into that side lane. Now he's back in his humble abode, the mid lane. I really want to see him go aggro. I want to see him just try and pop the Zoe, but it's really blooming hard, honestly. You got both sums, mate, actually. Just go for it. Oh, gosh. Morgana's got, like... There she is. He wants it. Ah, yeah, but he spots out Jarvan. All right, so goes in on the Jarvan here. Two Qs. That is so much damage. Got the mini baby cage as well, but a flash out from Jarvan means he's not going to get anything there either. Jar Jarvan? Jace with so much damage. Jarvan's dead. So is Darius. And Talia finishes off Zoe as well. Bloody hell. A little bit too far forward there from the Talia, but holy crap. Three people just died instantly there. I wasn't even like, a all right, fine. Darius especially, mate. How did you die? Look at that. They die hand in hand. That's so cute. We're well, almost hand in hand. I think they're a bit... I don't think they like each other, Darius and Jarvan. I think they really don't like each other at all. One's the Prince of Demacia. The other one is... Something... Noxus's big baddie. Uh, I don't think that's... Uh, yeah, that's like Liu Kang and Shao Kahn being best friends. Don't think it's a, uh, a thing, really. But either way... We'll ignore that rambling. I've completely lost track of Faker, whose record is now in the top lane. Got his Black Cleaver here, and is building into a Sterax next. Sterax is really, really good, actually, on Bruises now. Since it got changed, it's absolutely amazing if you just want to go uh, on the on these champions. Basically, any champion that can buy a Black Cleaver, if you get Sterax on them, it's really solid. The, the shielding is huge. The AD you get from it is pretty massive as well. It's just really nice, and the fact that it now gives you bonus AD means that most champions uh, most champions prefer it. The only people who don't are Triforce users. But even some Triforce users, it's still good on, honestly. Anyway, Faker's playing the split push god while his team makes it all happen in the bot lane. Important as well that the two lanes that his team wants to go into now are the top and the bot. He absolutely does not want to be mid lane here, nor do his teammates, because mid lane's already gone down. There is an inhibitor... It's, it's, it's gone, like there's no reason to go mid lane anymore. Instead, you just want to go for bot or top, because those are the two lanes that are open uh, and, and alive for you to take things down. So as you can see, with a whopping 1-1-4, one, one and four, Faker does what Faker always does and hot carries his team, dragging, kicking and screaming across the finish line. Nothing to do with this 11-1 jungler. Or anything like that. So that's how Faker plays the new Aatrox. A bit of a boring game. Sorry about that. But this is actually the only Aatrox game that Faker has played uh, in his uh, on his account. This is the only one he's got. So yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. Thumbs up if you like the video. Subscribe to me for more. And I will see you in my next video.